So after the Lokulit, the one of the major uh, form of uh, uh, igneous rocks uh, is uh, batholith. Okay, and batholith uh, again are the the largest kind of intrusive bodies, irregular in shape and occupies very large area as compared to dikes and all that we were talking about that uh, they were very from uh, ten to hundred meters and all that, but this will occupy very large. So, like uh, other uh, igneous forms uh, uh, or the, the, the structures, uh, batholith is another uh, structure which is one of the, uh, the largest kind of uh, intrusive body, uh, which is irregular in shape and occupies very large area as compared to the other uh, forms which we have discussed uh, like uh, dikes, uh, sills and all that. Okay. Now, if you look at the batholith, it will have like almost like tens of kilometers it will cover at the basal part and uh, on the top uh, area the, the, the which is going towards the surface is terms as stock okay. and that will be having again uh, the cover it covers an area of about few hundred a few kilometers okay. but batholiths are mostly uh, the areas which are uh, which covers larger uh, region okay in terms of if you take the uh, compare with other igneous uh, structures or the other igneous intrusive bodies. So, these are uh, having the slopes if you take it is uh, dipping away from one another. Okay. Hence, uh, we see at the greater depth you will find that they are covering very large areas. Okay. So, their occurrence is commonly associated with mountain building activity. So, where we are having subduction zones and all that we will find uh, this type of uh, intrusion intrusive bodies okay. and the batholiths are either uh, comprised of granite or granodiorite in composition and uh, the another associated uh, uh, intrusive body is the stock. Okay. So, stock uh, uh, as we have we are talking about that it will be of few uh, kilometers okay. and it may be around 10 kilometers in maximum dimension and they are always associated with the batholith. So, batholith will cover larger area at the bottom and then the, on the upper part we will see the, the stocks okay. and this is one of the best example of stock or the batholith uh, in uh, US California. Now, uh, uh, this is another one uh, which is uh, termed as bismillith. It is a cylindrical shaped body again okay. and what we see is that uh, that this is uh, uh, very much similar to the uh, localith, but uh, we find this as an as an intrusive body uh, within dike uh, at, at the uh, in the uh, at the depth and uh, uh, the top we have some intrusion like what has been shown in the figure. Okay, so mostly uh, it is developed when highly viscous magma, which is acidic in nature, is injected because of the lateral spreading along the bedding okay. and it requires to move upward and form a cylindrical shape. Okay. So, this is uh, uh, the, the, the body which is termed as bismillith. Okay. So, uh, we move further and look at uh, the variety of igneous rocks. So, formation of igneous rocks and identification criteria we will see how we can differentiate one rock from another and how we can differentiate whether it is an intrusive rock or it is an extrusive rock. Okay. So, as we discussed uh, uh, in the lecture of uh, mineral uh, uh, different type of minerals, we looked at uh, the continuous and discontinuous series and we, we discussed about that how uh, uh, the minerals are formed uh, at different stages and, and as we have discussed in the beginning that cooling of magma will affect the formation of different crystals and formation of different minerals. Okay. So, please recall this uh, uh, two series that is discontinuous uh, ferromagnesium series and the continuous non ferromagnesium mineral series. Okay. And so, the combination of this minerals will usually uh, will be able to uh, see that uh, the different type of rocks 
um, uh, in different type of rocks, okay, of igneous rocks mainly. So, as uh, for example, if you take granite, okay, so granite is comprised of uh, orthoclase feldspar, then you are having quartz, then you are having biotite and plagioclase feldspar, okay. And so, so it is mostly the aggregate of different minerals, okay. And that is what we have, we were talking about that what is rock, if you take rock is an aggregate of different minerals. So, here we are having number of minerals, plagioclase, orthoclase, biotite and quartz, okay. So, we have that, that, that is the composition of the mesa. So, different rocks will have different composition and we will learn as we move ahead in this course while talking about different type of rocks that this uh, minerals will also provide uh, strength to different rocks, okay. So, hardness of the rocks, the durability of the rocks in terms of the weathering will depend on the constitution or the composition of different minerals, okay. And you have to remember the hardness, uh, moho hardness scale, which will also help you in understanding that which mineral is harder and which mineral is uh, softer, okay. So, harder and softer will also uh, will have the effect of weathering, okay. So, the harder minerals like for example, you are having uh, quartz is 7 hardness is much comparatively harder and most of the rocks will have this one, okay. The rest of the minerals will get eroded or withered, but this will be, uh, will remain in the, in the deposits, okay, or the, or the rocks. So, uh, let us move ahead and see. So, this is again comparison of the Bowen reaction series different type of uh, minerals which have been formed uh, with the continuous series and the discontinuous series here and uh, with the uh, with the different composition different rocks are been named here. So, we will talk in detail about what is basalt, what is gabbro, andesite and diorite, dryolite and granite. Okay. Now, these are uh, the, the different rocks which are which we will see that how they are classified as an extrusive rock or intrusive rocks. Okay. So, as the temperature decreases and uh, the increase in silicon percentage, okay, in the liquids, different type of uh, rocks are formed and different type rocks are comprised of or they comprise different uh, minerals here, okay. So, uh, the another most important are other than the composition is, this is the criteria which we will follow to identify the, the rocks is the texture, okay. And we have different type of texture and textures are again which are been classified based on the grain size mainly. So, we have uh, like uh, the textures which are associated with the uh, intrusive origin and the textures which are associated with the extrusive origin. Okay. So, as we have discussed in the, in the previous lectures that fast cooling okay, will result into the fine grain crystals or the fine crystals formation or and the uh, the uh, the slow cooling will result into the uh, the coarser uh, crystals okay so uh, based on the size of the uh, of the crystals uh, they have termed as like uh, the crystals having the size greater than 1 cm very slow cooling hence we we talked about they are, they, are, they are not coming right up to the surface so they are intrusive in nature Okay, so they remain below surface, uh, and uh, cooling is very slow. Okay, so they are termed as pegmatites, and then crystals which are having uh, the size around one to ten mm are termed as pheno phenolytic uh, texture, and then we are having larger and smaller crystal. That is a mixture of larger crystals, uh, larger than uh, ten mm or larger than one centimeter. So. And then we are having a ground mass, what we say, this is the ground mass here and then we are having the larger crystals here, which are surrounded by the ground mass. So, this uh, uh, type of uh, uh, texture is termed as uh, porphyritic texture. And then we are having uh, the, if you move into the extrusive rocks further down and then we are having finer ones that is. Uh, Affinitic texture, glassy texture, vesicular and all that. Okay. So, affinitic is having like less than 1 mm rapid cooling of magma, whereas here if you look at what we see in porphyritic, let us just slow and then, so initially there will be in slow cooling which will result into the formation of larger crystals, then there is a rapid cooling 
uh, that which is, which is probably because of the change in the magma viscosity or the composition. Okay. So, they will have different composition here and that is why it results into the formation of larger and smaller crystals. Whereas, if you look at the affinitic te uh, texture which is having the crystal size less than 1 mm will be rapid cooling or very uh, fast cooling will be seen in, in terms of the glassy uh, nature of the, uh, the rocks. Okay. Then we are having vesicular and then uh, we are having pyroclastic and all that. This we will talk as we move further uh, while talking about the eruption of magmas and all that. Okay. So, mineral composition <coughs> is again an important criteria as uh, uh, we have been discussing right from the beginning when we were talking about the mineral uh, formation and all that. So, mineral composition is one of the major criteria to identify the, the rocks. Okay. So, we are having uh, uh, feldspar and silica rich rocks and we are having mafic ma magnesium and uh, 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 iron rich rocks, we are having mafic rocks. Now, mafic rocks are basically mostly darker in colors okay. or and the felsic rocks are mostly uh, or the felsic minerals are, are lighter in color. Okay. So, the, the rocks which are comprised or are having the composition more of uh, mafic minerals okay, will have will give you the darker colors. Okay. Whereas, the, uh, the uh, rocks which are comprised of felsic minerals will, will give you the lighter color. So, so looking to the rocks in, uh, directly, one can identify and one can say that okay, fine, this is felsic rich rock and this is mafic rich rock. Okay. So, felsic mostly what we see is uh, quads, then we are having plagioclase, pota, uh, plagioclase or potas, plagioclase, muscovite, uh, uh, mica and all that. Whereas, if you move another variety of mica is biotite, which is uh, a mafic rich and then we are having amphibole, pyroxene and all with. So, these are very important uh, color index, which you can use to identify the, uh, the rocks along with the texture part. Okay. So, texture is a crystal size and then how the appearance we see uh, of, the, uh, uh, of the rock surface and then the mineral composition. So, based on the color index, you can identify the felsic and mafic one. Okay. Then coming to uh, the other part, which uh, again uh, is uh, uh, the type of magmas, if you look at. Okay. So, so, if you look at the type of magma, we are having felsic, which is light okay. and then we are having intermediate mafic, which are darker and ultra mafic. Okay. So, it shows that the felsic uh, uh, are normally lighter colored minerals and mafic ferromagnesium normally darker colored minerals we are having. So, these are been uh, grouped in the darker colored minerals, olivine, pyroxene, amphibole and biotite, whereas lighter are potas, feldspar, plagioclase, quartz and muscovite. Okay. So, this is based on the color index. So, if you move towards the side and you are having more of uh, the mafic minerals, then you will see the, the darker colors, whereas you are having lesser uh, uh, mafic minerals, you will have lighter colors having felsic uh, minerals. Okay. So, this also indicates that if you move from the lighter minerals to darker one, you will have decrease in silica percentage. Whereas, if you move towards the, the other side, you will have increase in silica percentage. So, this is one thing and different type of rock as I was talking about, then we can have the lighter ones. We are having rhyolite granite, we are having endocyte diorite, we are having basalt gabbro and then we are having basalt and dunite or peridotite. Okay. So, these are the rocks like dunite and peridotite which will comprise almost 90 percent of all when okay. so, ferromagnesium mineral we are having. So, let us see one by one how this uh, different type of rocks looks like uh, in nature. Okay. So, we are having uh, uh, affinitic rocks which are fine grain. Those are the rhyolite, andesite, basalt, and uh, uh, then basalt, orvin rich basalt, and all that. And then we are having phaneritic coarse grain, okay, which are granite, diorite, gabbro. So, now uh, if we just uh, recall uh, and compare this with the cooling process, okay, then we can also justify that which one is the intrusive and which one is the extrusive, okay. So, intrusive are the coarse grain because the, the cooling of magma is slow here, where the cooling of magma is faster here. So, we are having affinitic. So, this all rocks which have been uh, listed here are the extrusive rocks, whereas the granite, 
diorite and gabbros and etcetera are the phoneritic coarse grain are the intrusive rocks we are having. Okay. So, this is the, the table uh, which uh, talks about one is the origin, whether it is an intrusive or extrusive rock, the intrusive or extrusive rock. Then we are having texture, where we classify based on the crystal size or the grain size we are having. So, we say pegmatite, phoneritic, porphyritic etcetera. Okay. And then we are having rock names okay, and that is based on the, the chemical composition. So, this all combinations if you take you can easily identify the rock and you can uh, you can say whether it is an extrusive rock and intrusive rock. Okay. So, uh, texture of igneous rocks if you look at based on the granularity of the grain or, or the grain size we are looking at. Okay. So, grain size depends again on the physical conditions that prevail during the time of crystallization of magma. Okay. So, slow cooling will give rise to larger mineral grains and fast cooling will result into the smaller mineral grains. Okay. So, hence we, are, we see that these are finer grains and these are coarser grains okay. and these are related to the extrusion and this is intrusive rocks. Okay. So, phoneritic texture if you look at, so we what we see is the coarser uh, uh, minerals okay, or the crystals. Okay. So, is, it is characterized by larger size minerals, which can be easily seen by naked eyes. Okay. Size is at least 2 mm or greater and commonly associated with intrusive, which are also termed as plutonic igneous rocks. Okay. Because the magma in the crust cools at slower rate and have enough time to result into the formation of larger size of crystals. Okay. So, example of uh, such type of rocks are uh, granite and pegmatite. Okay, there are more also, but these are these are few examples for that. Okay, then uh, we look at uh, the diorite. Okay, so we are looking at the phoneritic coarse grain uh, uh, rocks. So how the diorite looks like? Okay, diorite is an intermediate rock. Again, so we are having the the whiter part is mainly the plagioclase feldspar and then we are having the, the darker ones are amphiboles. Okay. So, it looks like, so it is comparatively lighter. Then we are having the gabbro. So, as we are moving towards the, uh, uh, towards the right, then we are getting into the mafic rocks. Okay. So, we are having felsic and mafic. Now, we can look at the gabbro, it has compar comparatively it is darker in color and the composition what we see is again the feldspar is there, plagioclase feldspar and darker ones are amphiboles. Okay. So, percentage of, uh, of uh, silica will reduce here, uh, whereas the ferromagnesium minerals will increase. Okay. And then we are having uh, the affinitic uh, fine grain uh, rocks, we are having rhyolite. So, let us see how rhyolite looks like and basalt. Okay. We will keep both uh, together and try to see. Okay. So, uh, affinitic texture is characterized by fine grain uh, minerals, which can be seen under microscope, okay, because the size is less than 2 mm. Or, okay. So, commonly associated with volcanic, we say, so those were the plutonic and this is volcanic extrusive rocks, because magma on the surface cools faster and result into the formation of very fine crystals. Okay. So, example is basalt, andesite, rhyolite. So, this is an rhyolite, which is comparatively lighter in color, rich in uh, felsic uh, minerals and basalt is di uh, darker in color, more rich in mafic minerals. Okay. So, again basalt, we see it is fine grain and this is also fine grain. So, origin and then if we take the, uh, the texture that is an extrusive rocks, if you look at uh, the vesicular uh, nature okay, or the texture, then we have pumice. Okay. This is comparatively very light uh, uh, rock, uh, which uh, uh, is having the, the cavities within it. Okay. So, this is this again uh, cavity rich, very light in comparison with the other. So, uh, it is it forms during the fast cooling uh, process of the magma containing gases. Okay. So, it, the the uh, the eruption or the removal of the gases will result into the uh, left out pores, what we call the vesicles. Okay. So, compared uh, uh, 
uh, of uh, comprised of vesicles that represent the gas bubbles that were been trapped during the rapid cooling of magma. So, when they are released, they will result in left, le, the left outs are the vesicles. Abundant vesicles and thin um, and the thin layer gives the rock a very low specific gravity, which is less than 1 g. Okay. So, this is uh, again in very lighter rocks, allowing with an ability to float on water. Okay. So, this is one of the very important and characteristics of the pumice, which is we termed as an vesicular rocks okay and this is an extrusive rock now uh, just to look at that where exactly uh, this type of rocks were been formed and then uh, most important part here what we are going to talk is that why we are having so many or so much of area uh, which is covered by your uh, volcanic rocks in India, okay. why we, we see uh, uh, the Deccan plateau, okay, which is comprised of uh, the volcanic rocks okay. and what was the reason, because we do not have any volcanic eruption right now, but probably had in the past. Okay. So, if you if remember we talked about the, uh, the plate motions and all that and then we talked about that the earlier all plates were together and finally, they, they departed from uh, the, uh, the 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 landmass which was to which was known as Pangaea, and then the Indian subcontinent particularly it moved from the south of the equator and reached north of equator. So uh, during this journey, probably it came across the process of volcanic eruption, and that what uh, that is one of the reason why we are having the volcanic rocks uh, in India. Okay. So, let us see and uh, try to look at that what, uh, why we are having the volcanic rocks in India, what we call the Deccan region. Okay. So, if you look at uh, that uh, the large area of the Indian uh, subcontinent is occupied by the Deccan uh, plateau, which is comprised of uh, volcanic rocks. Even we have few in, in Kutch region also and in this region also we are having lot of volcanic rocks. Okay. So, the occurrence of volcanic rocks seen in India, example the, uh, the Deccan traps locations in Maharashtra, some part of Gujarat and MP. And this volcanic rock occupies almost 2 lakh square miles of the area in India. Okay. So, very large area has been occupied by the, by the uh, volcanic uh, or the igneous rocks we can say. Okay. So, uh, this igneous rocks were formed near the end of Cretaceous period okay, that is around 65 million years ago due to volcanic activity when Indian continent started drifting from the main Gondwana land. Okay. So, the main Gondwana land was uh, located like it was been uh, suggested that the main Gondwana land was uh, the area which was been occupied. So, this was the main Gondwana land this is what we see. Okay. So, when it started drifting from here it came across like they won't be, it, it, um, it experienced the volcanic activity during that period and it was almost like 65 million years back. Okay. And this is what we call traps and this traps gave a uh, good building stone. Okay. So, if you if you see that this has been used uh, at various places okay, but, um, and also it gave us a very fertile clay loom particularly suited for cotton. Uh, cultivation in this particular region. Now, uh, just to uh, see that what are the different type of uh, what, what but this this we have already discussed, but I will just move very fast that the events different events. Now, these are all events which are which are been related with the, the volcanic eruptions. Okay. So, Permian Triassic uh, boundary uh, was the ma major event um, almost like 240 8 million years back. Then we are having Triassic Jurassic boundary, which is around the event again was related to the, the eruptions and the major species were been like uh, the extinction of major species during this period also. And then we are having Cretaceous tertiary boundary, which is around 65 billion years back. Okay. So, we have this are the events which are again uh, 
probably were been related to the major eruptions in the region. Okay. Now, coming to the texture again and then we look at uh, this examples of uh, the pegmatites and uh, phenaritic and porphyritic texture. Let us see this one okay. again the pegmatites. So, we are having very large crystals again they are these are the plutonic rocks and having the crystals greater than 1 centimeter. So, it looks like something like this. Okay. So, what we are having it forms at the late stage in the process of crystallization. Okay. And then have, we are having the porphyritic texture, it is a distinct mixture of large and fine grained minerals okay, together. So, this happens when slow cooling is followed by rapid cooling. So, phenocrest are termed as like larger crystals are termed as phenocrest and the matrix which is the ground, ground mass are the smaller crystals. So, we are having larger crystals and we are having the finer ones which are termed as the, uh, the ground mass. Okay. And then we uh, look at the andesite okay. and the andesite is mostly what we see is the porphyritic texture. Okay. So, we see the uh, larger ones which are phenocrust and the smaller is your ground mass. Okay. So, mostly the hornblende crystals are been seen and then ground mass is mostly the sodium and cal calcium. Of, uh, calcic feldspars. Okay, so that is a ground mass. Okay, so if uh, contains more than fifty percent larger minerals, then they are termed as porphyries. Okay, so this is another terms which has been given to the the rock based on the texture that if it comprises or contains fifty percent of larger crystals. Okay, then they are termed as porphyry. So this is an example of andesite porphyritic texture. Then volcanic rocks like glassy, which we see is one of the uh, the best example is the obsidian, and this is because of the rapid cooling of lava causes the minerals to form tiny crystals or glass like shape. Okay, so this is one of the example for the the rapid cooling. Okay. Then we are having pyroclast, and these are mostly uh, related or been seen or observed during the volcanic eruptions. Okay. So, this will this, this comes the rock fragments are thrown out of volcanic cone during the time of uh, eruption and the and based on this uh, uh, the most of the volcanoes are also classified whether the volcanoes are um, having the capability of uh, putting ash during the eruption or they are having the characteristic of uh, putting out the pyroclast. Okay. So, we say pyroclastic flows or it is having the uh, the lava flow only okay so this will be ejected on uh, in the atmosphere okay so based on the shape and uh, size they are characterized as uh, the smallest are called ash which is having the less than 4 mm or the clay size okay and then we are having slightly larger are uh, termed as lapilles which range in size from 4 to 32 mm and the biggest are called as bombs which are greater than 32 mm. So, all this can be classified as an pyroclastic flow. Okay. So, thank you very much, uh, we will continue in the next lecture.